Hi and welcome to my channel. I'm Oystein and I'm trying to become a bookworm. In today's video we're going to talk about this book, Bewilderment by Richard Powers. A book that I promised I would read and so I did. And as many of you might see, I'm not at the usual studio today. I'm at the cabin or hytta as we Norwegians might call it. And this is a place for relaxation and hiking and book reading, so that's pretty much perfect. This book, of course, is shortlisted for the Booker Prize this year, and it's a part of Einstein reading books that are shortlisted for that award. Richard Powers was also shortlisted for his last novel, The Overstory, which I think came out two years ago. So maybe this year is Richard Powers' year. We will just have to wait a couple of more weeks and see. This book is 278 pages. It's published this year and it's very easily read with a lot of spacing and a lot of uh, short chapters, which I found attractive. The story is about a father and son. The father and son is left when the spouse and mother dies in a car accident. The son is really struggling with the loss of his mother and the father is really struggling with the anger issues the son gets when the mother dies. The son doesn't really get a diagnosis of any sorts in this book and that's heavily pointed out throughout the story. The doctor tells the father that his son is on the spectrum where the father replies that everyone's on the spectrum and that's really the point. The father really doesn't want his son to have a diagnosis and doesn't think that any diagnosis fits all and so he tries to help him the best he can. He also doesn't want him on any kind of drugs and this is also heavily pointed out. And so the story begins where the father is trying his best to help out his son. But it's not easy. The father is an astrobiologist and a big part of the story is that the father and son take small trips in their minds where they visit other planets and he's also very engaged in sciences. At one point the father takes his son to see a scientist where the mission is to retrain the son's brain on patterns that earlier people have tested themselves at the clinic. So he gets into a machine and then tries to relearn his brain to fit another type of person. It's kind of complicated, that process, I would say. I think I'll leave the summary there. The book is made up of small chapters, almost like paragraphs, and this makes it really fast paced. You feel like you're turning pages all the time. It's also a good way of describing the relationship between the father and the son, because if it's just something small on one page, it makes it more significant in some way. I surely felt it like that when I read the book. So when emotions between the father and the son were described on a small paragraph on one page, it stuck with me for some time. I heard an interview with Richard Powers recently where he described the kid as being a great kid or something like that. And I have to say, when I read the book, I felt he was very precocious and I don't have a nine-year-old, so I don't know how nine-year-olds really are at times, but he seemed to be a bit much. This wasn't making me not empathize with the kid or the father, it just made me empathize with the father a bit more, even though the father made some really, really weird choices at times, I would say. I actually had an epiphany not long ago where I understood that I was quite irritated with the young boy in the book and that may be without reason because he did so many things that made life harder for his father but at the same time, he was really, really struggling himself. And I sort of felt bad because a lot of young people are struggling and I didn't cut him some slack when I read the book. Just that I felt these strong emotions while reading the book might actually be a sign that the book is written in a good way. And it took me some time before I realized that I actually was having trouble with the kid and his behavior, which affected my thinking when I read the book and I saw it much more from the father's perspective rather than looking at it from the boy's perspective. One interesting thing about the book is that drug use and illnesses and labels in society is really emphasized in the book. Maybe not emphasized but you really know that the author wants you to think about these things. 
but I did not feel that this was a huge part of the story later. The story was more about how the father tried to deal with the situation and maybe this indirectly is trying to tell me something about drug use in society. Don't know, I'm sort of conflicted on the subject now. The story doesn't jump in time but you have the bedtime stories where the son and the father visits new planets each time and it's sort of described in quite a detailed way how this uh, world is built up and how it would be to live there etc etc and really a very kind of scientific language which I found very boring also didn't quite see the point I felt it was kind of philosophical and it's probably there to drag me into the story but it rather pushed me away. The book also talks a lot about climate change and Theo the son really has this as his biggest interest I would say. Climate change is one of the things in the book that makes Theo the son really angry and you have specific things that makes Theo very angry when it comes to endangered species and what is happening to the world and of course climate change is real and can be really scary but the way it is written in the book makes me more exhausted than it makes me reflect on the subjects. I really feel that the parts about climate change is more poorly written and is not entirely in contact with the story. That's my opinion, of course. And I in general think that when the book is talking about specific scientific subjects, it is more boring than reading about the story in itself. I might be prone to think that the author's writing is somewhat suffering from the author wanting to get a point across in some way. Was that too harsh? As I mentioned earlier, my struggle with understanding Theo may affect how I think about his action later in the book, also to do with the climate change. So that might be a reason why I did not like how he acted around the subject. This might be one of the books I should read one more time with a new perspective and that would be interesting, but we'll just see. One thing that irritated me was the character's relationship to their mother because she is always seen as a very very good person and everything she did was perfect. There's never much reflection on the mother as not the greatest person in the world and that irritated me a bit because there is pointed out that she had obvious flaws but no one in the story actually sees the flaws in a way. So I was kind of tired when reading about that. To sum it up, I in general think that this book was a beautifully written book and it brought up a bunch of different important subjects but maybe too many of them. I did not feel a connection to the people in the book and I felt at times that the book was too hung up on the sciences instead of driving the story forward and that made it kind of boring at times. All in all I gave it 3 out of 5 stars because I thought it was many many beautiful passages and many beautiful conversations between the father and the son that were valuable for me as a reader. And the story is kind of cool, a lot of cool sciences involved but too much as I said earlier. So read it if you want to. Thank you for watching this video and subscribe to my channel if you want to and I'll see you next time. Bye!